everybody, JP here. Scott and I are in the tundra today. We are heading up into the Cajada Wilderness. Gonna do a little bit of exploring and uh, a hike today. No running today, because we're still working on a recovery from a long trail run while we were down in Austin, Texas. And uh, so today is gonna be just kind of easy out exploring, uh, seeing kind of what we can see, see if we can maybe find some uh, wild animals. Scout's back there in the back, if you can see him, and uh, we're heading up into the mountains, so stay tuned and uh, see what we can find. This is definitely worth getting out and taking a look at. This rock formation here that we were just driving by clearly has some underground water that comes out through it. As you can see, it's uh, still frozen here. Listen to this. patterns in that ice. Goes up there pretty good. Not too shabby. All right, we gotta get up to the campsite. Scouts uh, really wanting to get out of the camper. All right, let's get Scout out of the camper here. Stay. Stay. I got the kitchen right there. See if we got a chair with us today. We'll do a little drone flying. I guess kind of get a perspective of where we're uh, where we're at. Up. 
Yo. Well, we're at there. There's the truck. Let's pan up. I think this is facing the west. You see that road there in the trail. This is the west behind us. Just pan around here real slow back to the east. This should be looking back down towards the town of Blue Ridge. The Benton McKay Trail follows this ridge right here, I believe, is the right ridge. Let's head up that way. This is a pretty great forest. So we're not going to actually get to camp here tonight. We're just going to do a hike out towards the section of Benton McKay here. So I'll take my house shoes off and actually put my trail running shoes on. Um, we're just going to go down and see what we can see. A little bit of active recovery in from that long run down in Austin this week. And uh, who knows, maybe we'll see a black bear or some wild pig. We've seen quite a bit of wild pig sign on this trail. Um, and then when we do camp here at this spot, there are a lot of coyotes. Um, you can hear them all night. And so maybe, maybe we'll get lucky today and see something. And that would be kind of cool. It's not too bad today. It's probably it's close to 60. I don't know if it's completely 60 degrees, but it's close to 60 today. this on scout hey. so hunter doesn't think that he's a coyote and they got a little paracord leash that I carry for him so make a quick quick slip lease leash if I need to get the Garmin up here. Let's borrow it. This trail is in the Cahutta Wildlife Management Area, which is not the same thing as the Cahutta Wilderness. We're on the Georgia side of the border, all in this one wilderness surrounding uh, the Big Frog Mountain. And this trail will go down and hit a section of the Benton McKay. I think it's a double pin gap. So we're on Flat Top Mountain now heading down towards I believe a double pin gap and uh, just doing an easy day today get some active recovery probably do four or five miles weather's really nice a little cool but uh, but not bad and so far scout hadn't really scented anything as I say that he starts sniffing around on the ground but a lot of times out here you'll see a lot of wild pig sign. Um, I'm sure there's some black bear. 
and it's definitely warm enough for them to kind of start getting hungry and out wandering around. We see some wild turkey out here from time to time. I suspect there's a lot of deer. I'm guessing these tire tracks here have got to be Georgia Department of Natural Resources because this is all actually gated off from both sides. You can't drive in here. But uh, it's not spring, but it sure feels like it. I don't know if you can see on the video there in a couple places, there's still snow on the ground from the last few days where we had a little flash snowstorm. about to cross over we just crossed over our first mile 17 minutes and 40 something seconds walking at a pretty brisk pace about 125 beats a minute on the heart rate just enough to get some blood into the muscles and uh, help with that recovery All right, we got a uh, X that's carved in the tree and a red and white blaze. And then up here on this tree, there's a diamond blaze. So I believe that means we are officially now on the Benton McKay Trail. Um, we're not too far from that place I was telling you about what I thought was Double Pin Gap. Um, but see the white blaze on the tree. The trail's not really marked until right there. We'll have to watch on the way out to see if um, we can see if it cuts back into the woods anywhere because I don't think it goes all along this road the whole way out, but I could be wrong. All right, here's the sign that I was talking about. Well, I was almost right. It's double hog pen gap um, off of Flat Top Mountain on the Benton McKay Trail. So that's, uh, that's where we're at now. Definitely fully on the Benton McKay. At this point, you see the white diamond blazes on the trees, and we've come down to a single track trail now. Um, and there's some spots along here that have the look of like an old home place back from some of the settlement days, which would be a good place. There's a little stream right over here. So not always good access to water. Seems like it has water here most of the year, so this would have been a great place for a uh, for an old home place because it's a little bit more because it's flat top mountain. You're a little bit more rolling here, so it'd be good for grazing livestock, I suppose. And but it would definitely get cold here for sure. Tell by the way he's acting, Scout's starting to get a scent of something. So he'll run ahead and then stop and then look back at me. He hadn't quite figured it out yet, or he'd be after it, but he's definitely picking up the scent of something. This is probably his favorite favorite part of being on the trail. Is uh, when he starts to get on the scent of something. And he's mostly a sight hunter, which I think is probably common of all German shepherds. Because if he does finally see something and it takes off and runs from him, he'll chase it as long as he can see it. But if he ever loses it from his sight, then he just kind of peels off and comes back to me. See how it waits, though, on the trail for me to come back? And then he's kind of... And if it gets close, there's some coyote scat right there. It's been there a while, but maybe that's what he's on the scent of. 
if we get close to a fresh scent though, you'll know it because his nose will go up in the air. You can definitely tell that he's like got something on the wind right around us. Uh, but right now he's just, I think, on an old trail of something. All right, we're at our turnaround point here for today. We're about 2.02 miles in here on the Benton McKay. There's the, uh, as you can see on that, by everything behind that sign is that Cahutta Wildlife Management Area here in Georgia. Um, and then this is the Benton McKay, kind of heading back towards the uh, where we parked. And there's the Benton McKay heading on down. That will go on down into Cherry Log. And this will take us back up to Double Hog Pen Gap and then the truck. And I'm pretty excited to get back to the truck because I baked some potatoes today, or some new red potatoes, little small red potatoes, in a cast iron skillet in, uh, with olive oil, salt, and pepper at 350 degrees for about 25 minutes. And then I put them in a, uh, a vacuum thermal uh, food container right as I took them out of the pan. So hopefully they're still hot in there. And that'll be a nice, uh, nice little treat after uh, after we get back to the truck. There goes Scout cruising on up the trail. And here I am. It, uh, it's a beautiful day. It really is super, super nice. Again, cool but not too cold. And uh, it's really cool. Oh, also, here we have a lot of uh, quartz in this forest. I guess that's quartz. It's everywhere. All over the ground here. Every now and then you'll find some bigger veins of it or a really really big chunk um, along the trail side and uh, pretty neat to see I like the big veins because you'll see them just literally go across the ground for long distances so anyway I'll turn the camera off here and make some time back towards the truck so we can have a snack Veering off the road here because I noticed something over here that I haven't seen before when I've been out here to this area. And there's a board on a tree. I thought it might be a forestry service sign. At one time it might have been. It is not now though. Somewhere right in here. I think the Benton McKay branches off from the road, but uh, I hope Scout's figured out that we've stopped. Um, but false alarm, I thought that was a, uh, a forestry sign, but it is not. So I still don't know exactly where the Benton McKay branches off here. I'll have to uh, maybe one of these days get serious about it and look at tracks on the GPS, but I'm not terribly concerned about it because I'm not through hiking this section. All right, as I was telling you guys, so I took some uh, small red potatoes and put some olive oil and salt and pepper on them, put them in a cast iron skillet at about 350 degrees for about 25 minutes. And then um, after I took them out of the oven, I immediately put them in a Patagonia vacuum or a mirror uh, vacuum thermal food jar and uh, I'm excited because it's still warm to the touch and uh, so they probably just kind of slowly kept cooking in there you can see in there um, should be pretty good uh, they're really probably just finger food yep they're still uh, still warm they're perfect not too much salt so not too much sodium a little bit of black pepper and olive oil it's a nice, uh, nice snack for after uh, after a hike. Any potato scout, come here. Come on, come on. You want potato? Want to try it. Even scout likes them. <clears throat> All right. Well, I'm gonna eat some potatoes here and uh, chill out for a minute, and then I'll check back with you guys in a, in a moment. GoPro, stop video. All right, well, we have got a trash bag, and we're going to spend a little bit of time cleaning up somebody else's mess. Um, people, if you come out to our national forest, pick your trash up with you. 
Um, you're going to cause us all to lose access, and it's just a really easy thing to do. And don't be a jerk. Pick up your trash. Well, we got probably a third to a half of a trash bag of stuff that people had just tossed out. And it clearly was just one camper, maybe some high school kids. But uh, it's just don't do it, people. It's too easy to pick it up and take it with you. And then we all get to keep enjoying the forest. Go for a stop video. It's a, uh, a pretty good afternoon, getting in a four mile hike and a little bit of four wheel driving um, out with Scout, a nice little snack. So I'm gonna cruise back out of the wilderness here and uh, we'll try to get this video edited up for you guys. And I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any ideas, um, 
that you'd like to see in the videos. Uh, I do a lot of trail running, a lot of camping, uh, a lot of exploring. Uh, leave me uh, ideas down below. Um, I am looking for a new way to get Scout in and out of the back of the camper now that he's getting older. And uh, that ramp I thought would work, but it's kind of steep for him. So I was thinking about maybe some stairs or something like that. Plus that ramp takes up a lot of space. So if you have any ideas about how maybe to get Scout in and out of the back of the truck, uh, please leave me some comments on that down below and I'll give it a try. And uh, thanks for, uh, for tuning in and watch the video. If you haven't uh, liked and subscribed to the, uh, like the video and subscribe to the channel so far, uh, please do that. And um, uh, as always, thank you for watching. Go Pro Scout.